Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Megan's Blog, and we're here at Kulturpalast Wiesbaden. And with me are all four from London Two. First, of, uh, thanks for giving me this interview. That's really nice. Thanks to all of you. Um, yeah, how's tour going for now? Amazing. It's pretty nice. Yeah, I mean, I think we had uh, six shows already by far. Uh, so far, uh, first one was amazing. Second was awesome. By the third one, we ran out of superlatives. People are responding really nicely to us, and we're really looking forward for tonight. <laughs> yeah. I love it. It's so cool. <laughs> okay, so um, this is not your first time in Germany. It's actually your third or second, third, fourth, fourth right now. Okay. We had one tour and we haven't toured Germany, and uh, this is number five. So this makes it the fourth time already. Okay. So what you likes you most if you come to Germany uh, for touring, and what maybe disappoints you? Nothing disappoints. Okay. It's we feel like home. Actually, it feels safe in Germany than any other place in Europe. Uh, the trees are much beautiful than any other pl other place. The food. I'm sorry. <laughs> I have to. The food is amazing in Germany. <laughs> Wherever we go, especially fucking, it's like, you know, like vegans heaven, and um, Club Mate. We love that one. Yeah. Um, also, the hospitality is like. Nowhere else, it's amazing. Five stars. Five stars. <laughs> you saw the Club Mate uh, commercial in Israel? Not sure. There is one? Yeah, there is one, and it's fucking sexist. <laughs> you should check it out on YouTube. It's fucking crazy. It's uh, only sexist. We hate Club Mate. We're not gonna drink it. <laughs> okay, uh, you said that Germany, you feel like the most safe place in Europe. It's like, um, do you sometimes feel uncomfortable? Sorry, it's a question. Uh, as a general, how do you feel as Jews in Europe? But uh, are there places on you and for you as bands on uh, for you as a band on tour that you f felt once uncomfortable, or it's just like you don't get to point the region or something like this? Uh, but just <laughs> no. c can I? Yeah, please. Well, um, it happens sometimes. I mean, there was this one time we were in Belgium. I'm not going to say where, but uh, people are sometimes maybe throwing remarks. You remember that one? I don't... Yeah, in Belgium. Yeah. One time we, we, we were loading the van and there was this drunk Belgian guy saying, Faster Jews, work faster! Oh, shit. Yeah. 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 yeah, another one, please. I have a story in Czech Republic. There was a huge guy, huge guy, <laughs> telling, telling Sima to remove her shirt and show her boobs. And that pissed me off. No, it's not Jews, it's just boobs, boobs problems. Yes, exactly. And it's a problem. And it was like super huge. And I was telling, if you have any problem, if you have any problem, get the fuck out. And I, we stopped for a second. I thought he would beat the shit out of me. But in the end of the show, he actually came and shake my hand and said he's sorry. And I thought he's going to beat the shit out of me. So... Uh, well, yeah, I had one when the w there was this huge skinned guy and he just sat next to me and he was totally drunk and he's like, he showed me his forearm and there was like this huge swastika like tattoo here and he's like, you see this? And I'm like, yeah! <laughs> and like, this is, this is confusing for stupid people and I'm like, this is very confusing for me too! <laughs> and then he explained how it's not a swastika and everything and I'm like, yeah, dude! And uh, he was a nice guy, but totally drunken and probably had some shady past. But uh, it, it was all good. This is not the source of swastika. Yeah. Yeah, it's basically a very nice <laughs> symbol <laughs> who's... Yeah, at least in Europe. Took it and made it, like, awful. Yeah. So. <laughs> okay, weird. <laughs> as, as, as far as, like, feeling safe and all, like, we always had, like, um, 20 times more people that are trying to help and like f make us feel at home and actually anti <laughs> yeah yeah anti-racism and fascism and you know like-minded people I'd say okay um, you said at the Ox fanzine interview you did I think three months ago or something like that at Kruzok that you're uh, um, yourself are all Political people, or you see it when when we talk right now about racism uh, and sexism, but that you're you're not a political band at all, bas or basically don't writing uh, political lyrics. A little bit, yeah. just a bit, yeah. We don't try to like promote ourselves as a as a political band because then people are going to be disappointed because it's not that political all the time. Um, but some some songs are like 
I don't know, maybe two, three. But yeah, yeah that's. There's, there's political con context in some of the songs, but uh, like we don't we don't throw it in your face. Yeah, We're not saying like yourself. we believe this, we believe that. You can understand it from the lyrics, I think. Yeah, and that's what actually my question is: why, why, um, like, like from example, Mamre Streisand from Tel Aviv is doing it the heavy, the heavy way, and all they're doing pretty good, but they still do it the heavy way. So you're s simply not the types of of throwing people everything in the face, or um, there's something what disappoints you about political or it could be I don't know. I didn't understand. What, what's the I, question? I'm sorry. Um, so. You s simply don't like political lyrics or something like this, or, or explicit no. political lyrics, or it's, you just just say, "Hey, we're not the type. You you got to get in close and touch with us." I guess that Mama Streisand, for example, are more of activists, and we all have political political opinions, of course, and we talk about it even in the van. But we don't like to put it in the front. We like punk rock. We like to our songs to talk about feelings sometimes, and not. I mean, Israel is a really political place. Politics is everywhere, so music is kind of the place where we choose to escape it. Well, not escape it because we handle it, but it's our, you know, our place where we can do our thing, not necessarily the what what we do in everyday life and what we think about. Have something. We address other issues, I think. I think we we put some points about politics, but it's not the main purpose. If somebody wants to talk about politics, we love when people come to us personally, and then we put our views, but it's not the main dish in the show we do. More, f more feelings. Yeah, um, well, I, I think, uh, you know, po politics are, are a very complex world with a lot of systems and definitions. And uh, when you mix it all up with uh, people and just throw it in, the f in their faces, they might, it, it might, m might make it a bit more difficult for them to connect with your message. And basically, I mean, I, I think we still deliver like a very humanistic, like a very human message of friendship and, uh, and unity between people. And I think that once, uh, once you put this on the table, you have more common ground for discussion with everybody else. So this is a positive thing in my, in my opinion. And you know, I'm, I'm like a pretty political person but I find I find this band is like a really big uh, way to communicate my feelings and and even my political emotions, even though if you're not uh, explicit, because people they can connect with the vibe better than they could connect with uh, someone that's confronting them directly. And it's like funny because because we are from Israel, people expect us to be political, yeah. and you know when you go to Israel, it's not only politics. There's life going on, and like it's party hard sometimes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sometimes we just party hard. <laughs> no kidding, but it's like we have, you know. I think it's it's more diverse than just one topic, and it's not. We don't call ourselves a political band because it's like being hypocrite because we're not. You yeah. know, that's it. Okay, this leads us direct to uh, to other questions. Let's get the last political question over. So we get, yeah, we're we're in Germany and we're talking about Israel. So we we got to do at least. Um, it's basically um, to follow up my documentary. If you put crazy people into a crazy place, I did two years ago. For example, Smiley, but also Kids Insane or Baron Hope said that they think in two or three years it's getting much more worth, and much. It's getting getting especially not better in Israel. So what what do you think now? 2015 after the new Gaza war and especially what do you think? How the future in Israel will show? Maybe uh, on the one hand maybe political, but also basically for the scene or for the kind of scene that exists in Israel. Mm, I think we'll take the mic. <laughs> I will. Thanks. Uh, well, I think these are quite grim times politically in Israel in uh, all sorts of ways because. Uh, Let, let's say um, the, the, last, um, the last major wave of civil demonstrations was around 2011 and it was uh, and it died down in a, after about a year and uh, there is a lot of suppression of activists like in all all, uh, all fields of activism right now whether it's human animal rights uh, Palestinian issues whatever um, and right now we have a really uh, a really fragile but pretty extreme right-wing government in power. And it's really frustrating because they're using every momentum they have to pass like really ridiculous legislation. And that's all I'm going to say because I don't want to get in trouble. Can I get in trouble? Uh, Can I send a message to Miri? She could go fuck herself. <laughs> Which Miri? Which Miri? Regev, of course. Oh, come on. No, but <laughs> she lives in my town. She lives in my town. I, I hate her. I think that <laughs> there's a hope, um, like a general hope 
around the world because there's a lot of like right wings all over the like different countries in the West that are like rising and there's a general hope I think that somehow it will just crash you know like all together just like the whole fucking thing because it's it's becoming you know not realistic and maybe something will just happen when it becomes more and more like crazy then maybe people would just want to want a real change you know it's what I hope yeah okay let's get back to some more <laughs> Uh, nice stuff like um, what you mentioned like Israel is a special place what do you think uh, in my opinion there's the Israeli scene is, is fucking amazing how I saw it and how I feel about Israeli music there's kind of a special spirit in it and it doesn't matter if you if you don't, don't know like take shitty city who's doing more like party music or often doing party music or you take uh, Maris Reisen or you or Kids Insane or Baron Hope who said it, what, what do you think for you as person made Israel music and Israel punk and hardcore or Israel DIY so special compared to the Western other Western countries uh, can I? yeah no I think that in general because uh, Israel is unlike Europe it's kind of more uh, difficult to get instruments and to actually uh, it's it, It's not as accessible as Europe, and people are more hungry for music. And uh, I think because of this hunger and because it's not as easy, uh, a lot of the bands are good. It's like a really small scene, but personally I think that there's a lot of passion in, in the music and you, you can hear it when you visit. Many of the bands that yeah. play at just regular shows are, are good, like really good. You know, you have to kind of try harder okay. because there's you can't get in a van and start a tour, <laughs> obviously, and you you have to. I don't know. There's like a standard for like shows, and and it's not like you can't play if you're not good or something. It's just like there's a small family and they're all pushing each other and really really um, giving like feedbacks to each other and like. There's a positive energy at shows for sure, and it's been like that for years now. And Guti, want to say want to say something? Yeah, um, you mentioned some bands, and th these are like our best friends, and we all played in other bands with them throughout the years. And you know, we're it's like an it's like uh, it's a diehard scene in a way. I mean, we all. Uh, We all keep it together. I mean, we don't. Our bands don't break up as often as they used to when we were kids. And you know, like my favorite drummers are from like is other Israeli bands you mentioned. And we all, you know, we're like all best friends, and we all speak with each other and have like great communication. There's no sense of competition or anything like this because uh, seriously, there's there, there's no money to be made, and and there's nowhere you could actually go. I mean, you can get on a plane and go on tour, and then you're back to your shitty life, you know, and. So, so everybody's like uh, holding it together for everybody, and I think it creates like a like a really great atmosphere of support, and it's been going on for so many years now. And you know, I'm I'm really happy to say that these guys that I'm sitting here with, I I, I could have had like the same conversation 10 years ago, and we had like other bands, and but it was the same people, and uh, yeah, it's it's like a really small tight knit group, I guess, and I I, I guess it keeps like a pretty high quality of uh, support and solidarity in, inside the scene. I got something else. <laughs> Common point for all the bands in Israel, in my opinion, is some kind of a frustration that everybody has. And it keeps the fire going. Okay. And I see it in every yeah. band that I listen to and in Israel. Um, I don't say pe people in Europe lack of it, of course, but uh, I think that this fire burns really in all of us, in the bands you mentioned, and many more that you <laughs> will meet in your life once more. That's a good point, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, One goes out. The next one goes up to you, especially. Um, you got you got voted as or mentioned in the top 10 of female fronted bands, kicking oh, as bands all, by by the Yeah, no, but because of <laughs> it was no. because, it's, because no, of me, no. The the, the the question is <laughs> the yes. question is how you, how you see this label female fronted because I discussed it with some friends at a at a feminist hardcore show and um, that. We saw on No Flyer you see, for example, female based or female drummed. It's always only female fronted. Uh -huh. How how do, how do you Jesus, are you like it to be labeled as a female fronted band, or you just say it like you did right now? So it's not about me. It's about all of us. We are fucking bands. So. Yeah, yeah. 
I don't see us as a female front. It, <laughs> it happens to be that way. <laughs> I am the front man, okay. front woman. Mm -hmm. So this is what happens. It, what hap what happens to be, you know, I'm the female in the band. So we don't really put ourselves um, as a label ourselves as a band, as a female fronted band, but it's this is what it is. And I think there's like with women in the punk scene where like they're on stage playing or just singing, it's um, people are kind of they have a habit of saying, oh, she plays. Be they have a, a, a woman playing bass, you know, it's like it's like a thing. You know, and it's just because I think it's mostly a men's scene. So it's kind of a nice thing to point out. Oh, they have a girl, you know, she sings or she plays this, she plays that. And I think this is what's nice to hear when you talk about girls and bands. I don't think this should... Uh, to some, some bands use it as a gimmick. And we, I don't think it's this way for us. I think we're just friends making music together it's not about me <laughs> um i'm a singer and i'm and i'm a fe yeah <laughs> i'm a female i was born that way and we're not trying to you know I, I mean to me it, it really looks like some kind of a ridiculous thing to bring more people to shows I don't know because we started this band as like a punk rock band and like the circumstances were so random I mean we just you know we had no other band so we started a band <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and yeah I mean I mean we got labeled as like tons of stuff like throughout the years I mean <laughs> I mean I mean skate punk really <laughs> I mean um <laughs> Pop punk. Yeah, pop yeah, pop punk is calm. I I can understand. Hardcore. Yeah, hardcore punk. Uh, but yeah, female front doesn't doesn't matter. Yeah, we're a female fronted band. Uh, um, it's like a in our band camp we're labeled as black metal, which is <laughs> we, <laughs> true. I don't know. Really? Okay. <laughs> yeah. So we're not trying to label ourselves as a female front. It, it's um it's a very it's a nice compliment to have like from dying scene. It's just we were really appreciative. We we liked it, you know, and I can see why people don't like to label bands as oh they're a female fronted band, and we don't do it. Um, when, when we write to people or talk to people, we say we're a punk rock band from Tel Aviv. <laughs> That's how we call ourselves. I mean, I mean, in Israel, I never heard like a there's like this female fronted band. I mean, sometimes yeah, there's this really great band. Oh, and there's a girl who sings, but usually no, you know, it's it's not it's not a thing. Yeah, it's it's. And they're like, okay, there's a female front end band. Yeah, in our scene, it's really not a thing, I think. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so so um, two last questions. Uh, first of all, maybe because I dropped some names now, maybe you want to tell the audience because I recognize that Israeli bands work much, really good in Germany. <laughs> like you see, a lot of people show up. You want to drop some names for uh, the people out there? They definitely oh, yeah. sh should check out. So give some. Yeah. Cross promotion. Yeah. Okay. So ah shit, I don't have the t-shirt. <laughs> so Sweatshop Boys, the Orions, Zuharmonics. Um, everybody knows you, Society. I'm uh, guessing. Um, uh, Bola Bar. <laughs> it's a it's a band. It's a punk band. It's in Hebrew though. But if you're up to punk, this is the best ever. Um, Bola Bar. Yeah, that's uh, Sweatshop Boys. We said Orions. It's called the Orions. Oh uh, yeah. Um, Kids insane. Which Kids you insane. You know. I mean, you said. Uh, City Rats. Yeah, you probably heard about them. Yeah, they it's an interesting band. It's like an, an everyday experience. Yeah, there is City Rats. They play hardcore punk and street punk and something. There is Total Complete, which is total chaotic uh, raw punk. Kesef. Uh, not sure exactly how to define what they do. Uh, best hardcore. Best is the name of the band. Dust. Yeah, there is Dust. There is uh, Zero Three. Yeah, just you know, just just research into it. I mean, we're all like connected in this huge network. You can just you can just find it. Go look it up. Oh, oh I have some more. Um, I play in the backliners and expect nothing with this guy. Oh, and there, another band that uh, uh, something some, something good, something good. Yeah, something good. Uh, <laughs> ah, there's Astroglides. If we go back, yeah, Brutal yeah, yeah. Assault. If we go back. Monotonics. Uh, okay. <laughs> it it never ends. It never <laughs> okay. ends. Okay.
Okay, and the most important question you always got to ask uh, a punk band, in my opinion. If you could be super villains, which superhero should be your arch nemesis? Arch nemesis. Oh. <laughs> so, so it's oh, oh, not, not Not which superhero you could be, so which superhero would be your enemy oh, at all? Captain, you, you Planet. Captain Planet, because he's a fucking hypocrite. I mean, <laughs> I mean, man, he's he's always, I mean, there's like, you know, it's like in the real world and he's always like, fighting against like punks throwing bins of pollution inside the river it's it's not like punks doing it it's like huge corporations and governments and and you know like and this is so hypocritical i mean those guys shouldn't be cleaning up like small things around nature and pick up garbage i mean i saw it as a child and i was like yeah i, I support these things but this is so off the point so yeah captain i fucking hate that guy Superman, because I'm Wonder Woman. Is, is Mickey Mouse, <laughs> Mickey Mouse a superhero? Because Definitely. yeah, I choose him because he's fucking weak. So <laughs> <laughs> Mickey Mouse, and I could take him. I think. Is he an is an asshole? No, he's a good guy. He's a good guy. Okay. So minus that. So. Jar Jar Binks. Jar Jar Binks ain't a really superhero, but yeah, fuck that Who's guy. Who's yours? Um, I would say Batman because not that I don't I don't like uh, I like, like love Alfred Batman Moore? no but it's basically that he got no superpowers yeah, so yeah, fuck him so so I tr yeah he just got money but the fucking hell corporates fuck fucking me all Batman. the time so <laughs> yeah. so I'm used to it okay uh, anybody one of you got some last words wants to uh, thank you for having us yeah thanks you for giving me the interview uh, I love you mommy <laughs> yeah, hello to our parents <laughs> and our families. Okay, uh, this was an interview with Non Tour. I'm looking for your show tonight. Check out Israeli Hardcore, check out Non Tour, and uh, thanks for watching. See you.